we've got to get the high ground. Surely you've heard that call out and maybe even said it yourself, but in this video, we're going to be discussing why you get the high ground and breaking down some examples of DreamHack Winter and how pro teams have utilized high ground to their best advantage. One team that's very good at this is Fnatic, who've always been a very disciplined team, playing in a very structured way, other than the fact of letting Himsy come around the backside to snatch up their Lucio right away. But the way they handle this fight, and as it develops into the next retake, is actually very smart. So NIP is on the low ground with their tanks and their Hanzo, who is their main DPS. But Hanzo doesn't have a lot of great shots for him because he has to shoot all the way up to the high ground, which is a bit of a awkward angle for him to see. And even though Ninjas of Pajamas fights this pretty well, considering the fact that Fnatic was a man down since the start of the fight, they trade out rather well. So Ninjas of Pajamas starts to go for the regroup, which is a smart move. They have the respawn advantage, so they should have six before them. But Fnatic on their retake, instead of just flooding onto the point, decide to take the high ground. Now, as Ninjas of Pajamas move their way up to get onto the point here, instead of Fnatic just flooding onto the point to contest them, they have D.Va kind of try to keep them at bay, but ultimately they're just going to have to concede the fact that Nip is going to get some progress on this point. All the meanwhile, they have Reinhardt on the top right, Soldier on the top left, and now they can concave down onto the point. McCree pops his high noon. At the last second, they send Reinhardt to contest the point, and through the ranged crossfire, they're able to shoot down onto the enemy, and that's the power of high ground. It gives you the vision to shoot the things appropriately, especially if you have the ranged hit scans to do so, but also it makes it hard for the enemy team to shoot you out. If Ninjas of Pajamas keep flooding into the low ground, what more can they do? Zappis is great on Han but shooting up to land an arrow into the head of a McCree or soldier is kind of an insane shot to hit. Now, as Nip coming into this fight, they actually have a massive ultimate advantage and toss Graviton at the high ground, and the only ultimate that Fnatic has to respond with is Transcendence, which is weak to Ana nade, but not if you're out of distance for it. Too far away from the Ana to be able to get a key anti-heal in order to make the Hanzo ult deal damage, and the massive ultimate advantage was basically thwarted by the fact that Fnatic had better positioning. Sometimes you can use your ultimates and abilities to brute force your way into a fight when the enemy team has the high ground, but you're still at a disadvantage if they play it right. Now, Ninjas and Pajamas don't have any ults to work with. They don't have high ground, and they have a ticking clock. Zappa switches over to Soldier to be able to sprint back into the fight, but they don't even go straight for the low ground because they know it hasn't been working. They have to take some high ground, but the clock's ticking. Fnatic knows this. They can hold their smart positioning and pivot on the angles because they know Fnatic's going to have to jump down into the point in a few seconds anyway. And now their only option, really, is to fight from the low ground again, which hasn't worked the last few times. This match between Fnatic and Ninjas of Pajamas went down to the last map, and that was it, and it got Fnatic into the Grand Finals match. Overwatch sometimes can feel like a bit of a slog, where you go in time and time again, and you might get frustrated at certain things working or not working, but it's important to approach them with strong fundamentals. Sometimes the fundamentals don't work, but over the long haul, they do. And it's these fundamentals that got Fnatic one map away from winning the Grand Finals themselves. Now, moving on to our next example, we're going to be watching Fnatic versus Misfits on Dorado, and what we're looking at an overhead view of is basically a free cart scenario. What I mean by free cart is, the attacking team doesn't have to do anything until the defense makes a move. The attacking team knows the defenders are on the high ground, but until they make some sort of play to try to jump in to stop the cart, you can be content with just getting the free cart, the free progress on the objective. Misfits decides that they don't want to let any free cart go by, and they try to jump down with Graviton, but D.Va eats it, and the fight swings into Fnatic's favor. Now, Misfits is going to have another opportunity to retake, and Fnatic responded in a very interesting way. Instead of leaving their whole team on the cart like a lot of teams do, especially in matchmaking, they put one person on the cart to push it by themselves, and the rest of the team goes to fight at the high ground, and D.Va goes to zone the enemy team's high ground. By holding this positioning until they get the frag advantage, they're able to make decisions on where they can go. They know Misfits has to run into them and retake the good ground, so the opportunities are going to be walking right into them. And there's no rush to get the objective immediately, so as long as you secure that team fight, you're going to get the objective. And that's a major principle in Overwatch that I think a lot of players need to learn desperately. Overwatch is not the type of game where incremental progress on the objective matters. Quite the opposite is the case. You have to win team fights, you have to kill the enemy, and you have to stay alive yourself. You can't just throw your body on the objective and eventually win. Here is a different engagement on the rematch between Misfits and Fnatic 
in the last match of the grand final. Look at the difference between Nevix killing his counterpart and then taking the high ground himself and Fnatic having no high ground control themselves. Nevix has a shooting gallery to him because the diva's not in his face and the enemy are already a man down and they have limited resources to work with. The high ground advantage dictates the pace of that entire battle. So simply just sending everyone on the cart and not playing to win the team fight first can be a massive mistake. On this last fight, Fnatic is in a desperation scenario with 10 seconds left, similar to the situation that they put Nip in on Volskaya. Misfits is holding the high ground and being patient with it until Fnatic commit and attack the cart. However, Nevix gets the opening pick on the Tracer again, and then they snowball onto the point, use their ultimates, clear them off, and that's the streets phase done. Now, unfortunately, Fnatic didn't have enough time to just force the fight onto the high ground and win it there. They had to go down to the cart because they were out of time. But what's important to know when you're playing yourself, if you have the time to secure the team fight first, always do that. Don't just keep funneling in onto the cart, dying over and over, without taking the positioning first. The positioning to win the team fight is more important than just pushing the cart in with brute force. Now on the flip side, Misfits is looking to close out the game here. They just have to get the cart past where Fnatic did and look how they, using the time that they have, send their players across the bridge in order to take the fight to them on the high ground. Skipjack on Winston puts up a key bubble. Soon on Tracer and Nevix on Genji are harassing the back line, looking for the key targets. And really, if you get into an extended battle in open space and sort of these skirmish fights, the DPSs of Misfits are just gonna eat you up and that's what happens to the Fnatic. They don't get the opening kill, their high ground advantage is completely thwarted, and with the movement that Misfits characters have, they pick apart Fnatic without letting them get set up comfortably. This unravels Fnatic at the seams, and they push the card in to win DreamHack winner. Guys, keep giving me your feedback on these pro breakdowns. Right now, they're my favorite videos to make, and I want to make more of them, and there's more recent LAN events for me to break down. It's really important for me for you guys to be able to absorb the lessons we can learn from the top-level players into your own play, because that's where we develop our tips from to begin with. The lesson of today is, the objective is number two, the team fight is number one, and winning the team fight typically means you have to win the high ground positioning battle. If this video helped you guys out, please hit the like button. It really does help us. Subscribe for more if you haven't already, because we upload each and every day. We also live stream on Twitch and do a variety of things on there, so you're going to set up email notifications so you can get updated when we go live. Follow us on Twitter for stream announcements, updates, and other cool doodads at your Overwatch YT. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.